Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us in this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Mansing. Topping our newscast, Lawrence Olive, Governor Kenneth Mapp's nominee for the Director of the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, as well as the VI government itself, could be in hot water for defamation. During a routine Senate committee hearing to review the governor's nominees, some statements were made that led to a lawsuit. News 2's April Knight has that story. Lawrence Olive is not getting confirmation just yet as the new director for the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. The confirmation process for Olive stalled when some statements he made during a Senate hearing led to a defamation lawsuit. On February 12, Olive stated before the Rules and Judiciary Committee that Biz VI, the company contracted to implement the Bureau's new real ID system, left the Virgin Islands without fulfilling its end of the two million dollar contract. I wouldn't say it was not fully rendered. There is some sections have been dealt with, but it, it has not been completed. I was told that the company has closed its office in the St. Thomas district and left. Olive also stated that the company is under federal investigation. But Biz VI CEO Syed Gilani is fighting back against the allegations. In a notice of intent to sue, Biz VI stated that they tried to reach out to Olive after his nomination but got no response. According to Biz VI, the company is not under federal investigation like Olive stated. The company also claimed that it completed the contract in 2013 and did not get some 60 thousand dollars in payment from motor vehicles for the maintenance phase of the project. Defamation is a little easier to prove for plaintiffs like Gilani, who's a private individual, versus those who are government officials. In this case, Gilani is suing for compensatory and punitive damages, saying Olive's statements caused actual harm to his company's reputation. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. News 2 will have more on this case in a later newscast. Wallowee Hospital is in the limelight again. A news report that hit the stands today pointed the finger at the hospital's hiring practices again, while also spotlighting excessive spending. News News' Erica Parsons has the story. Today's Daily News headline is startling, spending while begging. It's a six-page report detailing more than $700,000 in salary increases while the hospital still struggles financially. Wallowee Hospital continues to struggle while it works to maintain its certification with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. In fact, the hospital's officials have been petitioning the government and Senate for $10 million to complete improvements necessary to meet the mandates of a system improvement plan. Now documents obtained by the Daily News show employee raises for the last two years that top $700,000. The bigger increase is mainly at the top level. Meanwhile, Juan Luis Hospital has not paid into the retirement system and owe at least $5 million. We're trying to um, work with Juan Luis to get uh, our money that to us. CEO Dr. Kendall Griffith responded with this statement. The increases were balanced against the experience, morale, and increased job duties of our employees and the financial situation of the institution. While we realize the need for austerity measures, we must balance this against the loss of highly skilled and dedicated employees. The hospital's hiring practices also came under fire for assistant CFO Michael Younger, who has a number of arrests in Colorado that include DUI disturbing the peace and domestic violence. Younger is currently on probation, but officials won't comment on his record. In addition to hospital officials, I tried to reach out to members of the Senate Hospitals Committee, but there was a hearing today, and that made getting a response tough. Sandy? Thanks for that report, Erica. While we hospital officials are expected to appear before the Senate Committee on Health, Hospital and Human Services on Tuesday, they have to provide an update on the hospital's current standing. Students of Alexander Henderson Elementary School were dismissed early this afternoon. St. Croix Superintendent of Schools Colleen Williams said a torrent of bad weather over the weekend affected the school facility negatively and has made conditions not conducive to learning. Superintendent Williams said the maintenance division personnel, Deputy Superintendents Vaughn Hewitt and Faith George, along with personnel from the Department of the Interior, were on site 
to assess the situation and to ensure that the school's environment will be safe for students and staff. School officials regret the inconvenience to parents and the interruption in students' learning. Count on two to keep you updated. Well, today began a week-long financial awareness campaign within the VI National Guard. It's part of a national campaign supported by the Department of Defense called the Military Saves Week. This year's theme is set a goal, make a plan, save automatically. Major General Ronaldo Rivera signed off on the initiative for the local guard to participate in the financial readiness campaign. The goal is to get military communities to focus on reducing debt and saving money. All this week, there will be workshops on budgeting, retirement, saving, tax preparation, and more. The Guardsmen are urged to take the Saver Pledge to demonstrate their commitment to improving their financial standing. Investigation continues into an early Sunday morning vehicular accident on Veterans Drive, St. Thomas, involving a 2001 Toyota Echo and a 2000 Chevy S10 pickup truck. Police say the driver of the Toyota, 24-year-old Jama Rima, was heading east on Veterans Drive with a 22-year-old female passenger in the front seat. The Chevy S10 truck was operated by, the, by a 22-year-old male with a 39-year-old male in the front passenger seat headed westward. Preliminary investigation indicates the echo veered into the westbound lane and collided head-on. Reimer expired on the scene, sadly, and the female passenger was transported to the hospital listed in critical condition. The driver and the passenger of the Chevy S10 received minor injuries. Investigation continues into an accident involving heavy equipment on the King Hill Road on St. John that left one man dead and another seriously injured. VIPD officers received word from the 911 call center of the accident around 7.30 a.m. Officers discovered that an industrial crane had flipped and gone over the embankment with two men trapped inside of the cab. VI Fire Service, EMS, and St. John Rescue were all summoned to the scene of the accident to assist. The jaws of life was used to extricate the men, which took several hours due to the severity of the accident and terrain, according to officials. No information has been issued regarding the deceased man. We will follow up. Also, police say on Friday around 11.50 p.m., a single shot was fired upon a VIPD patrol vehicle. Officer Kendall Wart Wharton heard the shot fired while driving on Veterans Drive in the area of the water and power pump house, shattering the vehicle's front passenger side window. Wharton continued driving and notified central dispatch of the situation. The officer was unhurt and was not fired upon and was not fired upon multiple, multiple times. Several units conducted a search of Belton Road and the surrounding areas with negative results. Now anyone with information concerning this incident may call 911 or Crime Stoppers UFVI at 1-800-222-8477. U.S. Coast Guard and a U.S. naval vessel apprehended a Russian smuggler and intercepted 1,729 pounds of marijuana aboard a Finnish flagged sailing vessel in the Caribbean Sea. That's on Saturday, February 14th, approximately 130 nautical miles south of the Dominican Republic. The interdiction was in support of Operation Unified Resolve and Operation Caribbean Guard. The drug shipment was estimated to have a wholesale value of approximately $1.6 million. While on a routine patrol, the crew of the naval vessel detected the suspicious 40-foot sailing vessel. The Coast Guard cutter interdicted the vessel. The crew located a total of 43 packages of suspected contraband on board. Turning our attention overseas, the Obama administration says outdated rules are costing millions of Americans a huge chunk of their retirement savings. Today, President Obama proposed tougher rules on brokers who may be motivated by collecting fees instead of the best interests of those saving for retirement. Some financial planners say the proposal will actually limit professional help and hurt workers who depend on their 401ks, pensions and savings. The White House proposed a similar rule change in 2010, but it was scrapped after heavy lobbying from the financial industry. Keeping our eye on the economy, here's the New York Stop Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow down 23, NASDAQ up 5, S&P also down. Coming up on News 2... 
time for our Black History Quiz. Now, if you watched the Academy Awards last night, Glory, the ballad at the heart of the movie Selma won an award for Best Original Song. Do you know the history about Selma? More coming up. Now for a moment in Black History. Glory, the soaring ballad at the heart of the movie Selma, won an Academy Award at the Oscars last night for Best Original Song. The stirring rendition from writers John Legend and Common received a standing ovation and brought some to tears. In early 1965, Martin Luther King Jr.'s Southern Christian Leadership Conference made Selma, Alabama the focus of its efforts to register black voters in the South. That March, protesters attempting to march from Selma to state capital of Montgomery were met with violent resistance by state and local authorities. As the world watched, the protesters under the protection of federalized National Guard troops finally achieved their goal, walking around the clock for three days to reach Montgomery. The historic march and King's participation in it greatly helped raise awareness of the difficulty faced by black voters in the South and the need for a Voter Voting Rights Act that was passed later that year. Senator Kenneth Gittins, chairman of the Committee of Rules and Judiciary, is continuing the confirmation process for additional nominees with more hearings scheduled this week. On St. Croix, uh, Wednesday, February 25th, Commissioner nominee for the Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs, Devin Carrington, and Director nominee for the Bureau of Internal Revenue, Marvin Pickering, will both come before the committee to give testimony and field questions from senators. Also in St. Croix on Thursday, February 26, Pedro Cruz, Commissioner Nominee for the Department of Sports, Parks and Recreation, and Delroy Richards, Commissioner Nominee for the Virgin Islands Police Department, will make their appearance as well. Senator Gittins said his committee continues to push forward with the process. Meanwhile, the Committee on Rules and Judiciary, chaired by Senator Gittins, approved the nomination of Carlos Robles, Commissioner-Designee of the Department of Agriculture, Friday at the Irby Otley Legislative Hall. The nomination, which passed with a vote of six yes, one absent, will be forwarded to the full body for further consideration. Robles said that in addition to sharing more information about agriculture with the public, he would also be working with different agencies while seeking supplemental funding. Senator-at-Large Almondo Rocky Liburd is helping to reorganize the St. John Taxi Drivers Association. According to a release from the Senator's office, he will work with taxi drivers and other parties in improving the flow of traffic in the Cruise Bay area. According to Liburd, the group that previously worked to manage taxi traffic in Cruise Bay have fallen apart, thus the need to reorganize. Liburd said taxi drivers were in danger of losing control over passenger pickup near the dock and if the situation is not taken control of, another entity might have to take over. Meanwhile, the taxi class C exams will now be offered four times a year, and this according to the Board of Directors of the VI Taxi Cab Commission. Applicants are required to attend the Taxi and Tour Professional Development Seminar that's going to take nine hours and cost $250 in total. The first one takes place Thursday, February 26th from 9 a.m., to 12 noon, you can call 693-4211 or 773-1561 for details on registration and other information. Well, Wan Louis Hospital employees spent a half day Saturday beautifying the grounds outside the emergency room. Volunteers power washed the building, cleaned wheelchairs, IV stands and stretchers. They also painted the walls and trim as well as the curb. Some Barry University students and staff also helped in the cleanup effort, hand washing ER equipment, future plans including planting more trees and other types of plants, as well as updating the hospital's common areas. Officials say more cleanup events are planned and members of the community are welcome to help. Well, another new business will be recognized this week. The St. Croix Chamber of Commerce will be awarding Shoreline at Cheney Bay with a blue ribbon cutting ceremony on Thursday. Shoreline officially opened its doors in December, and the new restaurant seats 75 and offers a diverse menu. Every month, the chamber recognizes a new business as a way of supporting the Big Island's economic growth. That event will be held Thursday at 530 the Chamber's Business After Hours will also be held at Shoreline, in addition to the ribbon-cutting ceremony. Be sure to stick around. Your News to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.